Welcome back to the Tide Deer Penguin. This is Mike. I'm coming at you with the weekly news and review for July 17, 2022, 2022. So we do have a little bit of Masterpiece scale news this week. Some pretty cool stuff going on there. Also, we have Transformers, Legends, Mainline, all that great stuff. We also got some Masters of the Universe stuff. A lot of SDCC reveals going on this week. And then in addition to that, we have got some Thundercast reveals. Kind of cool stuff. It's pretty interesting what's going on there. And then... Some Joe stuff, and of course, we will, of course, have some Star Wars. All this and more, coming up. Okay, just a quick reminder, only two weeks until the Ramen Toy Apache Commander is basically not going to exist, and there'll be no retro series Centurion kind of stuff. They're going to pick up where Kenner left off, made everything unproduced that was planned by Kenner, but if this fails, it's just basically telling Ramen Toy that there's not enough interest and it's not worth putting tens of thousands of dollars into each project, and they're just going to move on to other things. So two weeks, 140, RamenToy.com, to get this guy in his weapon system and own a piece of history. First off, what's new at Show Z, we've got the Ironhide and Ratchet from Magic Square, both coming into stock. I think Ironhide's in stock, and the Ratchet's coming in stock right now at Show Z. Pretty exciting. We've been talking about this for a while, and they're, they're coming soon. So we have the KO oversized version of the Magic Square Minosaur. And the thing about this one is, this one is 12 inches tall. I thought it was going to be around the 9 inch, 10 inch, but it's 12 inches tall. So this is actually scaling better with your Chugger mainline. So this competes with Hasbro's version that they're putting out. So this actually might look better at the end of the day. But there's a full on set of five. The whole set is going to be up for pre-order, $1 down. No price just yet, but I'm assuming... Anywhere between 150 and 180 because I think if you bought them separately, you fell in that range. Shows he also has an Action Toys Unimetal S Series Galvatron, $10 down, $265. And this thing is about 12 inches, a little under 12 inches tall. A little bit stylized version on the Galvatron, but very G1-esque in a way. And it's estimated third quarter of 2022. This is an officially licensed product, I believe. And so, henceforth, the higher price of 265 so getting into some main, well, some masterpiece news in the third-party realm, the Metagate G04 Air King Pterosaur. This is 04. We've got the reveal of 01 from Metagate, so I don't know what 2 and 3 are, but this Pterosaur looks really awesome. Now, this is obviously just a render, and we don't know if it's going to have metallic or, you know, it's kind of softer paint, matte paint on it, but kind of feels from the render it's going to have metallic paint which would be interesting and cool at the same time. I would imagine certain parts be metallic and certain parts be matte, but I mean, who knows? Still, it is a really cool idea, really cool looking figure. I have no idea price, no idea about availability. It's a dollar down pre-order, and um, it's, it says fourth quarter of 2022, but we haven't got their first one yet. I think I'm going to be looking at reviews of the first one to see the quality and all that kind of stuff, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be okay. And uh, this is cool. I'm not a big Beast Wars fan, but I think this is cool. So we've got some more official pics of the Transformer Bumblebee movie Shockwave Plamo model kit that's approximately 12 inches tall, I believe, 30 centimeters, and it is made of die-cast metal and of plastic, has LEDs in it, due out uh, fourth quarter of 2022. Now, this thing does look pretty good, and the interesting part about it is, of course, it has its armor on it. You could take all the armor off because it is a model kit, but you have a lot of detail underneath. And here's what it looks like underneath. And this project's been going on for quite a while, but it's still pretty cool that they're doing it. And it is very interesting. The Yolo Park is the company that makes the gigantic, expensive, like $2,400 ones. And now they're realizing getting into these model kits, getting into this zone, and I'm lowering the price a bit to make it better. I'm actually not sure what the price is on this, but it's still really pretty cool. It says, it says it has 44 pieces, 44 plates. That's pieces. I, I don't know if that's number of pieces. I'm sure there's more than 44 pieces that go into this. So there's a lot of parts that go into this thing. But still, it looks really cool. And it looks really, really detailed. So we got a colored prototype or pro pro colored prototype of the Megatron from the Code of Kia. And this is a statue, which is pretty cool. And the thing about this is, I believe it's a 150. I think that's what it was last time I looked it up. But... It's Megatron. You're not going to look at Megatron the same way after this one here. And it's an interesting style that they have been doing for other franchises. So they're doing it for 
Transformers also. Now, we have seen the Optimus Prime already fully colored. I think the last shot we saw of the Megatron, the Megatron was just in kind of a grayscale. So now seeing both colored and looking good, and we saw a color render in the past. These are both prototypes ready to go. I think the Prime's coming first. Still really cool little statues. I don't think there's any movement in them at all. So we've got this Bumblebee gold version of the 3-0 Transformers MDLX Bumblebee. And it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty much like the Bumblebee except painted in gold. I'm not surprised. And they're making these smaller. Again, just like Yellow Park, they're doing the same thing. 3-0 is scaling them down, making these a little bit more affordable. Maybe a lot bit more affordable, which makes a lot more sense. So a lot more people can be involved in buying their products. And of course, it would make more sense on a lot of people's shelves. I think this would be considered a masterpiece scale, but uh, I think its price is $75, so it's not really that bad. It's non-transforming, though. You've got to understand that, but it does look pretty good. So this week we get the Mastermind Creations R51. Uh, this is our double dealer, and it's gray shot, gray scale, and so, yeah, looks pretty cool. This is uh, like different than the, the other one we're seeing. I think the other one we see is was that Generation Toy, but this does look pretty cool too. MMC, or Mastermind Creation, does pretty good work overall. They're one of the best companies out there for third party, so I like them here as the tank mode. That looks pretty great overall. And then, here we go with the bird mode, and yeah, it looks good. I, I'm not exactly sure how tall this one's gonna be. I know MMC goes a little bit smaller on the scale, but it still looks great overall. So I do want to say, speaking of MMC, we have the Ocular Max PS21 the, and the 24. They call this Medicus and uh, Navigation. So, Navigant? Navigants. And anyway, these are more or less competing with X-Transbots directly, and it's a bit of a smaller scale. They're going to combine to be an 18-inch tall combiner. But I want to say, I like the way these look better than what I've seen from X-Transbots so far. Uh, so... Especially uh, the streetwise, I believe. So looking at these, they do look good. They do look solid. And I guarantee you, the transformation will not be nearly what we had to deal with. <laughs> not anything near what X-Transbots did. So uh, it may be a bit involved, but nothing like what X-Transbots did. That was just crazy. That made no sense. But I do think these look good. And if they were just a little bit bigger, I'd be going in on this set instead of X-Transbots. It looks like a solid set. Again, here's the alt modes. And I... Maybe at the end of the day, the x Transbot alt mode is better. It does look better. But getting there is such a nightmare. And getting here will not be as bad. So I'm okay with the alt modes looking a little bit more cartoony, actually. And the x Transbots goes for more of a real-world accuracy. These feel like they're a bit of a real world with a bit of a cartoon flair. So this is something interesting. The Takara Diaclone Tactical Mover Series Gamma Resalter. Now, I'm pretty sure we've seen this before, but I just don't remember seeing it. So, Cosmo Marine version. So, it's got treads on it and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. I'm sure it's something that... I, I haven't seen it up for pre-order at ShowZ just yet, or uh, any of the other retailers. But uh, it might be a Takara Tommy Mall exclusive, looking at the way that it's everything is priced in... Well, it's not priced in US dollars, so it's probably not going to be available for us over here. Probably a Takara Tommy Tommy Mall exclusive. Here's another picture of it with some wings and bot mode and all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool, pretty interesting if you're into the whole Diaclone thing that they've got going on. Of course, they got more things going on than just Transformers. Transformers is one small aspect of Takara Tommy, but there it is. This is cool if you're in on it. So I'm going to put this in Masterpiece scale because this is going to be 9 inch tall and it's Masterpiece scale, whatever. It's not anything near a Masterpiece item. But Super 7 is making the Shogun Warrior Optimus Prime Shogun. They don't even put the Warrior in there. This is called the Fallen Leader, so Dead Prime, Sleeping Prime, and he has a shooting fist and all this kind of stuff. He's got an opening chest to reveal a matrix that's still alive and all that kind of stuff. Listed for 350 bucks. Says it's 24 centimeters tall, which is 9 inches. And that is crazy. 350? Uh, ready to ship? I don't know. I don't know about this for 350, but uh, maybe it's taller and they've got information wrong. I don't know, but still, it's kind of cool. It's kind of interesting, and there's a there's a huge Shogun Warrior collecting community out there, and and I'm pretty sure Brian Brian Flynn knows what he's doing. Okay, when it comes to the third party Legends news, really all the news I had I covered in the you know what's new at shows. Yeah, that's where I get a lot of my information too. 
So looking at this, this is a mainline Hasbro core class slash legends figure. And this came up and I was excited at first, but then I kind of stopped and looked at it a little bit and I'm a bit curious about it. And I started to wonder, is the one they already made better? And I've got to say, let's just do a side by side and let you decide. So without even handling the new one, uh, and just looking at this, I can tell you that I think the old one looks better in bot mode for the most part, and does not hold together at all in alt mode. The alt mode's okay too, but it just does not hold together at all. It just does not. I don't know how it could not hold together, but it just doesn't. So with that, I'm guessing this alt mode's going to be better than the other alt mode. That's probably what's going to happen. So the new one will have a good alt mode, and this one will have a better bot mode. Uh, they did make the arms smaller on the new one, but then just overall, I don't know. It's wheelie, and um, you still can't beat x transpots. And the one they made already was pretty decent, so I would have thought they would have improved it and done better than this. But it is only 10 bucks. So, on the left is the old one, the earlier version that they had, and on the right is the newer one. And if you literally pick up the transformed one with any pressure, it falls, like, comes untabbed, because it's not tabbed. So that's a problem, but looking at them, I mean, maybe the new one's got a better alt mode. Uh, overall, I just think that the old design was pretty decent, and this one is just different. I can't say it's better, I just say it's different, but hey, it's only 10 bucks, so not a big deal. Wait, now they're, they're going to like 12 at Walmart, sorry. So packaging is revealed for this Transformers X Tonka Tonkinator. And this is a G2 representation of a defense, uh, defense or of Devastator, of a G1 Devastator, G2 Devastator, whatever, yellow. But of course, Tonka written on it and all that kind of stuff. Kind of a cool thing. It's very niche. I think it sold out pretty fast, actually. And this is very retro set and very cool the way they did it. So, uh, still strange looking at this picture. Are all six of those in open window boxes? I'm curious. Or will there be some plastic on that? So we got more pictures of the Velocitron Speedia 500 collection in package. And a bunch of other pictures that we've already seen. I They just keep putting the same pictures up. But I, I did not see all these packages before. Either I missed it. So I'm going to show them. This one is for Blur. And then this one is going to be for Diaclone Universe Burnout. Which it's strapped in there and open window box and there's that then we have this one here for diaclone universe clamp down which looks pretty cool overall that's a pretty cool looking figure overall uh, then this is the one that I've never saw uh, this one took me by surprise I just have not seen this packaging and the way they packaged them in kind of sideways I was not expecting that but that's still kind of cool it's pretty interesting but it's strapped in there I can see people fiddling with that partially transforming that Popping that head up. I mean, there's, it is what it is, but hey, there's a the packaging for this. Pretty cool. You know, I wonder, because it does say you can order it online at Walmart. I expect to see these in the stores, but maybe it's an online exclusive, and then you don't have to worry about people messing with your stuff. So we got more pictures of the Shattered Glass Ultra Magnus, which is pretty cool, which I keep wanting to call Delta Magnus, but I know the colors aren't the same. It's a similar color scheme, but different. Okay, so anyway... Here we go. There he is with no armor on Prime. And this, to me, this is how Magnus always should be. Should be a Prime in with armor added. But I think the community split on this one still. So that might be an entire video. Like, the community split. But looking at this, though, uh, he is very chunky and beefy the way that's designed. And then here he is with the armor on, armored up. And, I mean, we've seen this mold before. It's just a different color. Uh, I, I say it's not all that special, but there's a lot of people that have really gone out of the way to collect the Shattered Glass. And the color, the different colors, they look pretty cool. So when I first saw this, I was very confused. I actually thought these were like minifigures, and then I looked at the price and said they can't be minifigures. This is Amazon exclusive Transformers Studio Series, Transformers the Movie 2007 15th Anniversary Multipack. Five figures for $142.00. And this is, these are supposedly 2007 reissues with slight paint variations. So I don't know too much about the designs for the 07 era. I picked some up here and there. Most of the ones I got at garage sales for 10 cents or under a buck and uh, missing a foot or something. So I, the transformation was really rough. 
because I was missing parts on all of them. But anyway, still, this is kind of interesting, kind of cool. If you want to go back and relive those years in one box set, in one shot. Okay, so I guess we had some early listings put up at Amazon UK. People found it, then it got taken down. Once people started talking about it, I guess that's how this whole thing went. But we've got three figures. we got a Point Blake, a Dead End, and a Skullgrin. And a little bit more information about them because of the descriptions they had up there. So this uh, first one, the Point Blank, which is the one I'm most excited about, is a G1-inspired design. It's 5.5 inch Autobot Point Blank. Converts in 17 steps, and he includes his target master within the Peacemaker. So, uh, pretty cool. I, I just I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like. Then we got a dead end, which is pretty self-explanatory. I, th I think we've already seen some pictures of a dead end, but anyway, self-explanatory right there. And then Skullgrin. So, uh, what's up with this Skullgrin figure? It says Skullgrin action figure converts from robot to Cybertronian tank in 20 steps, and that he's from the Universe Collide with Transformers. So, Universe Collide there into Multiverse. So, I, the thing is, isn't that like a pretender or something along those lines? But still, pretty cool. It'll be interesting to see how this comes out when it is actually revealed for real. So, we've got this Buzzworthy Bumblebee Creatures Collide 4-pack showing up at Targets, which is really awesome. Pretty cool seeing new stuff. Uh, we don't see new stuff. It's not at my target, so uh, <laughs> that's definitely not showing up there. But here's the thing. What really sucks is when something like this that's usually more expensive comes out, there's not that 25 off 100 or 10 off of 50. Sometimes I can luck out and it hit at the right time, but lately that has been working out for me. Looks like Alita 1 is showing up in Australia, and I think, I think I've seen some show up in the U.S. I'm not sure. But uh, this thing's right around the corner, so we should be seeing it pretty soon. I've seen everything else in most of these pictures myself, but this I haven't seen just yet myself. Should be showing up pretty soon. What's well, in the Philippines here, and they've got these guys. And so here's the thing with the Blitzwing. Like, I actually saw Blitzwing, and I was going to grab it, but $55. It just kind of took the wind out of the sail, and I wasn't excited. If I could have seen the figure, I, it probably would have pushed me over the edge to spend the 55 bucks. But I could see myself seeing an Amazon clearance or a Walmart or a Target or something clearance deal and kicking myself for spending 55 bucks. And plus, Walmart gives me such a hassle if I return anything, I'll just wait and find it cheaper somewhere else. All right, so getting into a little bit of G.I. Joe, here we go with a an SDCC exclusive bat. Now, I don't know how anybody that doesn't go to SDCC can get this bat, but interestingly enough, if they actually have it at SDCC, this will be the first Super 7 figure picked up. But I'm betting, I've started to hear a lot of weird stuff about getting codes or order codes and all that. And I'm really not up on understanding all that SDCC stuff because I'm not going. But if it's physically there, it will be the first Super 7 G.I. Joe figure. And of course people will be reviewing it. But I think Super 7 is going to do a great job with Joe. Uh, I have a high level of confidence with that. Okay, there's also this Pyramid of Darkness, which is really cool. This five, six-pack set? Six-pack set. So you get two standard troopers. Well, I guess three standard troopers. You get the robot, and then you get in disguise, Snake Eyes and Shipwreck. And it's got a cool packaging that goes with it. So they are doing some really interesting scene-specific or episode-specific sets, which are outstanding. And a lot of this stuff could go along with your O-Ring collection in the background. And we've got the reaction line with these guys here. I'm, do, do they glow in the dark? The answer is yes, they do glow in the dark. So anyhow, uh, Brian Flynn was saying also that these SDCC exclusives, and he was talking about the turtles. I don't know if he was referring to these, though, that the, the glow in the dark pigment has gone up 10 times in cost since the last run of glow in the dark. So uh, just don't expect them to be cheap. That's basically what he had to say and he did not really announce price on these i do know that he's saying that turtles things were 65 dollars and he was explaining that he didn't really talk specifically about these maybe they could still hold the price point on these because they're so small right so we got janet toys who makes a lot of stuff at retail these days and most specifically i just kind of think of like the cars and the trucks and stuff but they're making some 
pretty cool SDCC Street Fighter, and this is going to be a Chun-Li, and this is a Ryu, and they look good. The thing is that I was going to be in on the Playmates stuff, but if these were the 6-inch scale, and they look better than the Playmates, and if they do more than just two characters, I mean, it would be nice to see them do more than two characters and just dial it out, but still, they look really good. I mean, if you barely can see them with the lighting, they'll probably be a better picture soon. Thunder, 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 Thunder Cats, we have a Zartan version of Lionel. When I say Zartan version, uh, he changes color based on cold, hot and cold, all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's kind of a cool effect that we haven't seen in a while, and it's an effect that I probably would never use. I would not throw mine in a freezer just to make them bluer. So anyhow, but it's still cool, and I will probably pick this up if I can get my hands on it, if there's an opportunity to purchase this, maybe BPTS or one of those places. But uh, if I miss it, it's not the end of the world for me either. But uh, this is kind of cool, in a way, giving people an opportunity to pick up Lionel. Now, that's what Brian Flynn was saying, was that this is an opportunity to go ahead and pick up a Lionel if you missed out. And he's trying to figure out the best way to do it. And this is a pretty smart, ingenious way to do it. So, Brian Flynn did have a live stream with Toy Bro. And with that, he pulled out his Thunder Tank on live TV. No. Anyway, this this is pretty cool. This is massive. His Thunder Tank is huge. And uh, I look forward to this. And obviously, I'm displaying this on the floor in front of the shelf. I've already got the spot for it. And it is mind-blowingly big. It's worth the $500. Yes, I would have liked to see $350 on the price or $300. But as big as it is, as massive as it is in today's climate, as few as they're going to sell... 500 is not a bad price if you really think about it uh, at the end of the day. So uh, it's huge. That's big. Either that or Brian Flynn's just a really small person. And I think he's not that small. Those are six foot shells behind him. So there's an SDCC Master of the Universe two pack set, which I, I'm thinking this will be up on Mattel Creations. I think they said the 22nd, something along those lines, uh, be available at the show on the 20th and 22nd at 9 a.m. So. I'm going to be there. I'm going to try to get myself one. I don't know how much it's going to cost, but it looks really cool. And there is some flocked parts to the, the, the waist piece has some flock on it. And the upper part of the boots have flocking on it. So that's different die cast metal weapons. So just really strange things are putting into this. That are at the same time really cool but you're gonna be able to get the he-man at a standard release we don't know about skeletor in the future but i would assume i assume they're course correcting and going super 40th anniversary retro almost filmation but not quite not quite filmation but pretty close so i think they're going in the right direction here if they continue the line since people have already been picking up the superpower stuff in the stores and reviewing them todd mcfarlane decided let's go ahead and do a video and and finally after what months of speculation and rumors and all this and then actually showing up on shelves finally he officially announced it two days ago uh maybe three days ago so it's pretty cool that he's announcing it i'm already hearing of wave two uh in the works and on the way very kenner 1984 styled packaging the figures themselves uh are okay the cape it's actually got a big hole in it because that's part of how they package it so maybe we can fix all those things down the road. Maybe we won't get holes in capes, maybe down the road. But I got to say, I love what McFarlane's doing with the 66 Batman. And so at the same time, I think I'm going to love this. Figures are 10 bucks a pop. Vehicles are 20 bucks a pop. Walmart exclusives right now. I'm not sure if it's Walmart exclusive uh, for a short period of time that goes everywhere else. But even if it's truly just Walmart exclusive... They usually have enough Walmart exclusives for everything, so hopefully, hopefully, I start seeing them soon. So finally, we've got some Star Wars news this week, which some pretty cool stuff, but overall, uh, we've got clearance going on right here with the Target version of the R2-D2. Notice you're not seeing Boba Fett on clearance. And then with this, uh, the Navarro Cantina clearancing out half price wherever. I have not seen this anywhere, but one GameStop had one, and that finally sold at the full price so i i don't know if someone sees these online for a deal drop me a line because i'll probably pick one up but i'm not in it for 50 26 is still pretty hefty maybe if it gets a little bit cheaper by a few 
and make a full playset. We're seeing the prototype retro version of Chewbacca showing up targets right now. I completely missed the Stormtrooper. I was there when the case was there, but it was uh, street dated, even though it wasn't street dated. And I went on the street date and couldn't get it. So I think I'm done chasing these. I mean, I missed that. So I'm done chasing these. These are very kind of niche. And the fact that you can get the different colors of each one. So like there's six different color variations or something along those lines. It is a challenge to get all six, but I think if you get the case when it's there, you could get all six. So, that'd be so we got this a Boba Fett. This is another one of these convention exclusive Black Series Boba Fett War of the Bounty Hunters. So, not really sure about the whole uh, history behind this, but he's painted in like a charcoal color scheme. And of course, as always, Boba Fett Mandalorians—they always sell. Now, if you didn't know, the Reva lightsaber did not fund, and uh, I didn't check the wording on it, but it really, you know, from what I'm hearing, they're blaming the fans. It's the fans' fault, whatever. Uh, I don't know. It was a bad idea from the get-go, and I could have told them that. Any fan could have told them that. There were at least like 13 or 1,500 people that were in on it, more than likely, because thinking, oh, it's the only chance we'll get to get this, and I already have 25 lightsabers. Let me get my 26th one or something, so I don't know. But uh, it was it was doomed to fail from day one just because $500 price point for a lightsaber, it's a bit too much for me, even if it's double-bladed. So there's going to be this set here for the convention exclusive Black Series Andor, Captain Andor, and it has his droid in it. So the thing is that when I looked at this droid, I thought, man, that, that's a crazy looking droid. But uh, I guess we'll know about that when the show comes out. Now, I sort of enjoyed Obi-Wan. I wouldn't go back and rewatch it again. And I'm sure it has all of its flaws and all that. But it was an enjoyable for a one watch. I wonder how this Andor series is going to go. I think it says B2 Emo for the droid. But anyhow, uh, there's the packaging. That's what it's going to look like. I think it kind of sli they slide in and slide out. I, I guess that's how it works. But still... It's interesting, it's pretty cool. I, I just remember Captain Andor being the super hardcore peg warmer that sold on clearance for three cents at Walmart. And it's just hard for me to get past that. So there's an Amazon exclusive set of retro collection for 25 bucks. So it's 25 bucks to get the Amazon exclusive Bounty Hunter set. It comes with an exclusive Bosque, I guess. I don't know if they're gonna put Bosque out. Uh, did they already put Boss out? I'm, I'm already forgetting all the stuff because there's been so many strange things and uh, it's buried under 30 boxes for me to dig it all out. So anyhow, we have Bosk and Boba Fett looking pretty cool. Uh, it's a pretty good uh, Empire Strikes Back kind of deal. Uh, $25. Let's see what the Boss looks like. Here he is in his card bag. So it's retro and the retro is okay. Retro is pretty cool i don't think we've gotten a boss yet now come to think of it but yeah looks pretty cool overall if you're in on this uh retro has been selling very well actually it's been selling very well uh better than some of the other ones out there so that's that's pretty cool and there's supposed to be some black series star wars uh figures for the 40th anniversary showing up at targets and walmart so i have no idea anything about this what's going to be going on and they don't know the characters and all that kind of stuff so no character names mentioned. So this is something that's going to be coming out soon, I'm thinking. So when they start showing up uh, and the listings start showing up, I guess we'll start finding the names, what characters are involved in this. I'm just guessing it's reissues. Another reason to reissue more figures doesn't surprise me at all. So lots of stuff this week. I mean, SDCC is really overshadowing absolutely everything this week. And it's no surprise. It's probably going to overshadow for two weeks and then we go back to the normal stuff. But overall... What do you think about all these reveals and the stuff that's coming out? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Try to your out.